mayflies who have just one day to enjoy the spring sunshine, to have sex just once and die, to elephants who often have 70 years. Life and death seems to follow a pattern. So time, it would appear, is a precious commodity that is strictly limited by biology. And for humans, too, it's no different. Horace Higgins feels, literally in his bones, that his time is running out. It's tough because uh, you get aches and pains, and my knees are presently uh, getting a little arthritic, and it hurts when I run. And um, it's a, it's, to tell you the truth, it's quite a drag. Horace is 82. But he has a secret that suggests his lifespan could be much longer than you might expect. If you really want to know what it feels like to be getting older, you should talk to my mom. Mom, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. I have some pictures here from 1894. A picture of you, your brother Harry, and your sister Fern. And it shows you sitting in the chair and you're looking quite sad. Do you remember that yes, picture? Yes, I remember the picture. Okay. My mother said the photographer frightened me. Marion Higgins was born in 1893, which means she's now an incredible 112 years old. One of the oldest people in the world today with amazing memories. I can remember that I was standing on a business street in Boise, Idaho. I saw a horseless carriage. It was just a buggy going by, but there was no horse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of peculiar. At 112, Marion has outlived many of her friends and family. So what then is the secret to Marion's long life? <laughs> well, just keep on living. That's all. That's all I can tell you. Don't die. Are we gonna lock this up? Yeah, just close the door. Today, many more people are living to old age. But in the whole world, just a bare handful rival Marion's 112 years. The oldest ever was a Frenchwoman, Madame Jean Calmon, who died in 1997 at the incredible age of 122. But that seems to be it. Biologically, our allotted time runs out. We seem to be bumping up against a natural limit of the human lifespan. We share this fixed lifetime with all living things. But there's one thing that makes us unique. Unlike all other creatures on this planet, we are the only ones who know that our time is limited. And this knowledge shapes us as humans. This feeling for the poignancy and transience of our lives has been at the root of so much of what we value in human culture. Knowing that our time is limited helps to shape the way we view ourselves and see the rest of the world in ways that science is just beginning to discover. Have a look at these pictures. Which do you remember and which do you forget? Psychologist Laura Karstensen uses the pictures as part of an experiment to study the emotional impact of knowing our time is limited. Humans are, to the best of our knowledge, the only species aware of our mortality. Um, not just aware that we're dying when we're dying, but that at any point in time, throughout most of life, we have some sense of how much time we have left. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is just look at a slideshow of pictures. Some of the images have negative emotional value, and some are positive. 
In her experiments, Laura's team found that young people remember a wide range of pictures. A skydiver and a woman with a baby. Snakes. A man with a bloodied face. But older people consistently forget one set of images. Baby being held in the arms of his mother. Mushrooms. Good glass of brew. Perhaps surprisingly, it's the negative pictures they forget. That's about it. I can't recall anymore. OK. With age, they begin to take account of how much time they have left in life, and in doing so, tend to see what's most important and what's not important anymore, and to let these other things go. So it turns out that as we age and realize that we have, say, just five years left, this fundamentally changes how we see the world around us. Well, I think actually that older people are happy knowing that they only have five years left. It is that, that the, the five years left is what's telling them it's all right to let your guard down. And so being able to stop and really experience the day and to live in the moment is something that may be one of the re secret rewards of aging. Throughout history, the awareness that our time is limited, that our life will eventually end, has driven humans to search for a way out. For centuries, religions have provided one. At the heart of religions, practically all the world's religions, there is the offer of eternal life, time without end. This is Wells Cathedral in Somerset. For the past 800 years, every Christian who's walked in here has been reminded that their soul is immortal. So I imagine that the promise of eternal life was a powerful incentive for the people who worshiped here. From their Bible, they knew that God controlled time. They read that Adam had reached over 900 years of age, and Methuselah, the oldest, he lived to be 969 years. So they knew God had the power over earthly time. And they believed that God could grant them an infinite life extension. It was essential that graveyards be placed close by so that the living and the dead were almost side by side. To the medieval mind, death was viewed as a, as a phase, as nothing but a natural continuation of life. The problem today, though, is that many of us are more skeptical. To get everlasting life in heaven, you have to trust that heaven actually exists. Speaking as a scientist, I think that there is a problem with regards to the afterlife and religious immortality. And that is there's no proof that it exists. Remarkable claims require remarkable proof. But maybe you don't need proof. Well, I do. I'm with Woody Allen when he said, I don't want to live on in my work. I want to live on in my apartment.